Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Erica Majumder. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the Department of Bacteriology. And I'm very excited today to be talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, and maybe hopefully you'll be inspired for it to be near and dear to your hearts too. So today I'm talking about landfill microbiology and sort of the excitement and what we can be doing with landfills and they're kind of underappreciated. Uh, recently, my lab had started working uh, in the last couple of years in our local landfill and I had come to realize how little we knew about landfill microbiology, even though microbes are the main drivers of landfill and our main drivers of waste remediation. And so I was just so disappointed to find out that there were less than a handful of people who were working on landfill microbiology uh, in the sciences. And there's just so much we can do with them. So I'm really glad to be giving this uh, talk today. Uh, some of you probably stop thinking about your waste once it enters that garbage bin outside your house or in your office. You might not think about where else it goes. Uh, but there's a couple of different routes that the trash takes after it leaves your bin. And you probably know this, but maybe we don't always think in detail about these. Uh, so. Sometimes things can be composted. We also see that a lot of trash these days is being incinerated. Uh, so that's burning or pyrolyzed to uh, recover energy from that. Uh, some places will d use what are called materials recovery facilities or MRFs, MRFs, uh, where they will sort the trash uh, to grab out the different materials that can be used for a variety of processes. Uh, and more commonly, our trash ends up in the landfill. And depending on where you live, that structure of the landfill can look very different. So sometimes we have highly engineered and highly structured landfills that are good at protecting whatever leaches out from the environment. In other cases, the landfill is just a pile of trash that's open and not really restricted and kind of expands out elsewhere. So we have this huge range of infrastructure in how we handle our trash, uh, but we can start to think about how we can use microbes to improve uh, this waste handling process and uh, provide a cleaner environment for ourselves. And so in particular, I'm interested in landfill microbiology for two reasons. One, on the more basic science side, where landfills are a very interesting subsurface environment, and we don't know a lot about the biogeochemistry that's happening there. It's a completely different subsurface biogeochemical situation uh, than we see in non-man-made uh, <laughs> environments, which I'll talk about in just a second. And then I'm also really excited about landfills for their potential to replace mines uh, and to generate energy and to also um, come up with better waste management solutions. So on the applied side, or on the basic science side, excuse me, uh, the subsurface environment of a landfill is very different than what I'm used to. I'm used to working in aquifers or sediments and you see in these types of environments or even in microbial mats, you see stratification of layers that have evolved over time. You get different layers contributing different types of metabolisms to this. Um, and you, yeah, you get the stratis stratification of the microbial activities that are happening. Uh, however, in a landfill, there's not really this nice even layering or this nice even stratification that we uh, get in the subsurface because, well, it's a dump. And so it just depends on what came out of the dump truck that day on that time and got compacted and uh, put there. And so it's an incredibly heterogeneous environment uh, where you can have anything and everything together all at the same time. And so you get, you, we still see all of the typical biogeochemical cycles happening, uh, nitrogen cycle, iron cycle, phosphorus, carbon, water, um, all of those good things are still occurring, but maybe not in the, the way that we typically expect. So I think there's a lot of interesting biogeochemistry to be learned from studying our subsurface landfills because it is such a heterogeneous environment. So my lab has started to do projects where we're starting to understand what the microbial community looks like, how it's assembled, how it's structured, and how it is contributing to these different uh, biogeochemical cycles that are taking place in the landfill. 
And these are my students field sampling, all the glamorous work you get to do in my laboratory. Other people do marine microbiology. Apparently, um, I've been called the landfill lady a couple of times, which I think I'm mostly okay with. <laughs> Maybe not. So, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, yeah, those are my brave students uh, field sampling. And as we've been learning more about what that microbial community looks like and how it's structured and how these different metabolisms are happening, we've been starting to think about how we can use this knowledge of microbial metabolism and biogeochemistry to help solve a few different problems that society has that pertain to landfills. So one issue with landfills is that they're filling up. So we don't have space to put our trash and the population keeps expanding, economies keep getting stronger. And one of the issues besides energy, water, and food is also where we put all of our, all of our waste. And so we uh, need to understand microbial metabolism to speed up degradation in landfills so that we have more space to put things. Uh, the other reason I like to think about landfill microbiology is because of all of the potential we have uh, to not just break down the materials to make more space in the landfill, uh, but to produce useful products or to produce energy as we're doing that breakdown. Uh, so one of the challenges that's limiting that is that we really don't know what microbes are there. And so if you look, there's very, very few papers that will tell you what the microbial community composition of a landfill is beyond 20 centimeters. And if you know anything about anaerobic metabolism, you know that anaerobic metabolism is not happening in the first 20 centimeters. Uh, it's usually limited to people just doing a push core. So we have to be doing these vertical depth profiles to understand what that community is and how uh, we can look at that. And so there's a lot of bioprospecting that we can do to see what metabolisms are present. And then since it is an engineered and controlled environment, to stimulate those metabolisms to do something more favorable. We can also start looking with metagenomes and other types of functional assays to find metabolisms that we don't know. So landfills are interesting evolution environments in that a microbe has been in contact with a non-native substrate, often for decades untouched, and we know that there's then a potential for the microbe to start using that material. So often in the bioremediation field, we find microbes that are capable of these different metabolisms from a contaminated environment after dozens of years. So we let nature do that evolution of metabolism. And so we're excited about landfills for the variety of metabolisms that we could be finding that we don't know about. And we need those to be able to tackle this new range of substrates that we give them. So Landfill microbes are really robust. We give them these crazy range of chemicals and uh, different types of products, and yet they can metabolize them, sometimes albeit slowly, but with time. So we want to understand those so we can uh, improve those metabolisms and this range of substrates that they're consuming from this highly complex microbial community and this highly complex you know, and heterogeneous range of substrates that we're providing for them. And if we can understand those metabolisms, if we can speed them up or stimulate them, or even perhaps introduce new metabolisms into the landfill, it's a controlled environment. There is a possibility of having some different types of interventions that you couldn't do in an open ocean, for instance. And if we can uh, use those types of uh, processes or stimulate these microbes, I think there's a lot of potential to recover energy and materials from this degradation of this wide variety of trash. And so I'm just highlighting a couple of the different things. A common practice already in landfills is to harvest the biogas, which is mostly methane and CO2. And in many municipalities, that biogas gets funneled directly to their electricity plant and they make electricity from it, which is great. So uh, we could obviously stimulate methane production, make more natural gas, that's one way to recover energy from a landfill. It's also what you see in a lot of municipalities are also now just switching to incinerators because their landfills are full and that's what they're doing with their incinerators. So they just burn everything and they drive um, their electricity generation. I think there's also a lot of potential to recover chemical feedstock molecules. Uh, a lot of these anaerobic uh, microbes produce short chain fatty acids, produce all kinds of molecules that are important for the chemical industry to replace fossil fuels. 
So this is definitely a source of uh, feedstock chemicals. Uh, there are also, depending on the practices in the landfill, there can be a lot of metals present. And so I really like to view landfills as the mine of the future. So you can be getting energy from them. You can be getting all these other materials that we've already dug up from other places in the earth. Why should we keep digging them out of the earth when we have plenty of them waiting for us in our landfills? If we can do undersea mining, I think we can do some mining 100 feet down in a, a municipal landfill. But one of the issues with that is you need the material concentrated, which is where I think the microbial activity comes in. Because we can use our microbes to biomineralize uh, or to concentrate the different metals so that they could be recovered uh, better in terms of a biomining perspective. Uh, and then maybe we can also use microbes in landfills to produce different types of bioproducts for us, like biodegradable polymers or other uh, types of materials that could be interesting. I hope you have maybe thought about uh, landfills a little differently today and that you see that there's a lot of potential for uh, looking at our trash and thinking about how we can use our microbes uh, to do that. And, really understanding these beautifully complex and multi-kingdom communities uh, to help solve some of our issues, but also learn some interesting biogeochemistry. So, thank you.